Hi guys! So today we're going to do another crazy makeup transformation. As you could tell by these big red ears, we are going to do Foxy the Pirate Fox from the video game Five Nights at Freddy's. To continue on to our series, I think I might only do one more character after this. We will see. But if you haven't played this game, again, it is a very creepy horror game of these animatronic animals coming to life and attacking you while you're a security guard working at the facility that they're at. Very creepy. So let's see if we could turn into this red fox and get started with the video. First, I'm going to take off these ears, but we will put it back on later. I just want my hair out of the way so we could paint our face. Putting my hair up in like a low ponytail, I actually did this weird like Asian type little bun style on the back of my hair and put the top portion in a clip of the excess hair from the mini lower bun. It kind of reminds me of one of the soldiers from Mulan, just like a little bit. And I used some hairspray to tame down all my baby hairs and extra bangs and strays, even though they can't be tamed. They got a mind of their own. Then instead of shaving off my entire eyebrows because I kind of need them, or want them I should say, I'm going to smooth them down with some glue stick so that we could paint on them later. Doing layers of purple glue stick and doing layers of powder in between that. I'm doing about three layers for my brow hair density. You can get a hair dryer to speed up this process of the eyebrows. Then I'm getting a white eyeliner pencil and starting to outline all the intricate details of Foxy, the pirate fox. From Five Nights of Freddy's, I'm starting off with the brows and then doing the eyes. Well, I should say eye. This fox is actually a pirate, so it has an eye patch. And I'm making sure that my eye shapes stop above my actual eyelid when I close them and doing the nose of the fox above my natural nose. We're gonna get intense. This is almost like that Venom from Spider-Man makeup I did a while back. And then doing the teeth around my lip area. And then we're gonna drop down the bottom jaw to our neck and chest area. It is such a challenge to make your makeup go down, not just on your face, but on your neck and chest area, but we're gonna try it and see what happens. To even challenge myself more, we're gonna do a special trick, but before that, I'm going to paint my ears with the aqua black color so that they disappear and blend into the background. And now it is time for a makeup special trick. I'm gonna get two different types of products, one being liquid latex and the other being Prosade. Instead of Prosade, because it's kind of hard to get and very tough to get off, you could use spirit gum for this, but you might need a little more spirit gum than you do Prosade. I got these small like disposable shot glasses off of Amazon because they're great for products for special effects makeup. So I'm starting off with the Prosade and gluing these cotton balls together because we're going to make Foxy's big large whiskers. I couldn't find a prosthetic that was the shape of this so I'm making them myself gluing cotton balls together. Prepping some tissue paper by tearing it apart and getting it down from two ply to one ply because we need them in really light thin layers. Gluing those cotton balls to our face with some Prosade and then we're gonna get my least favorite material which is very stinky which is liquid latex and putting that on top with a disposable makeup sponge and then layering some of that one ply tissue paper on top of that. This is going to take a lot of patience. You might want a friend who you really trust to not get this in your hair to do it for you because doing this by yourself is very difficult. Making sure the edges and the seams of the tissue paper go down nicely with the liquid latex between the cotton and the tissue and on top of the tissue is extremely difficult. Girl, I had to get me my little princess mirror and use it from behind to make sure I had enough liquid latex back there so that it won't fall apart. These layers of liquid latex is going to act like paper mache. You want it to be some sort of hard substance when it dries so you can paint on top of it. And you want these to be kind of like cone shaped semi. Look at the reference pictures of Foxy the Pirate Fox to make sure you have these correct. Make sure it's all covered with liquid latex and seam down nice. And please do not get this in your baby hairs because I got some of my baby hairs and later on when it comes off it's not a fun process of taking it off. For some reason while I'm doing this, it looks like I just shoved hard-boiled eggs onto my face and they're really creepy looking. Like it looks like something out of the X-Files, like a secret case, like this person mutates weird forms on their faces, but I kind of like it. It was really difficult to do this process, but challenging yourself is always the best because you learn so many things. Who knew you could make prosthetics out of cotton balls and tissue paper with some liquid latex? 
And no, I am not naked. I do have the usual wrap thing on when I'm doing body painting like this. Just FYI. You want this to completely dry for 20 to 30 minutes with even a hair dryer on it or it'll take longer than that so that we could put paint on it and it won't be wet and gross and fall off your face. Don't think I filmed me powdering down this prosthetic tissue paper when it was dry, but you should do that. And now it is time to paint that face. That sounds like an awesome TV show I would want to watch. I'm using some red cream paint. I would suggest you use aqua paint on the face and creams on the prosthetic tissue paper things because this cream paint gives such a harsh cast on the camera like it's too shiny, even if I powder it down. The whole time I didn't understand this till I looked at the footage afterwards is what I'm telling you. Learn from my mistakes. And it's super, super difficult to get in the cracks of that tissue paper prosthetic with the paint. You might want to water down your paint a little bit or use a little bit of red aqua paint in between, which I'm gonna do later. This is like paint by numbers again. I'm painting this red around the eyebrows, around the eyes, and around the muzzle mouth of Foxy. And then I'm getting this like lighter red color that has a little bit of white and yellow in it for the muzzle nose mouth of Foxy, the top portion. And I have a darker red burgundy color for the eyebrows and the eye sockets. In the socket of the eye, I'm coloring around that part where the whiteness of his eye is going to be. I love that word, eye sockets. I don't know why, it's very creepy and I like painting in that area of my face. These are all cream paints and I'm getting a little bit of a yellow cream paint to dab on that part of the muzzle because it has a lighter yellow tone on that side. I'm really trying to study these pictures. I always try to really go towards the reference pictures for these because I'm going to get an orange stipple sponge with that burgundy cream paint which is basically just black and red cream paint mixed together and do some texture outlining the features of Foxy's portion of the face that you've painted so far. Then I'm getting whatever black cream paint I have on hand. These are all Ben Nye colors. I don't know if I mentioned that. And coloring in the nose of Foxy, completely pitch black. Not my nose, Foxy's nose. And doing dots where the little whiskers come out of its nose area. And the black pirate eye patch. I mean, come on, any character with an eye patch, I would want to probably paint it on my face. I don't know why. Eye patches are just so mysterious and cool. Now to color in Foxy's other eye that isn't the eye patch, I'm gonna get this light, pale, silvery, blue, almost white cream paint and color in that whole eye. Well, the part of it that's left over. Now I'm just getting the same tone of cream paint that I used on the sockets of the eye to do the round red ring of the iris of Foxy's eye. You might want to powder in between these colors if you're layering paints on top of each other. Getting some black cream paint and outlining the features of Foxy's portion of the face that you've painted so far. Getting some red paint and starting to do the top portion of the mouth. Took some red aqua paint and started painting the bottom portion of Foxy's mouth on my neck. I want to use aqua paints here because I think they dry better on the neck and don't leave as much creasing as cream paints do. Then I took some black aqua paint and started painting in the features on the top portion around the top teeth of Foxy's mouth. It's starting to look like a creepy weird vampire but instead of two fangs it has four. Doing details on that bottom part of the neck, you could barely see it. I almost was running out of room on my little camera viewfinder. And while I started taking pictures of this to make sure that everything on the neck matched the top part of Foxy's face, I decided that I didn't like it and I was gonna wipe away that bottom portion of the mouth that I started on and start all over again. Because everybody makes mistakes, as Hannah Montana said. Miley, I miss those days. So we're gonna start from scratch again just on that bottom portion. If I had to start the whole thing over, I think I'd go crazy. If you don't like something, correct it at any moment in your life. You want to be happy with your results. So yeah, with that red aqua paint, I'm just making the mouth bigger, wider, and lower. Like a necklace around my neck that's made out of weird blood tone red paint. Got some white paint and did some tooth marks where the teeth are gonna be. You can't really see it because I need to put my camera lower. And painting in the blackness of the whole center of his mouth, where his throats to eat humans is going to be, and around those white teeth. Getting that black aqua paint and also doing these shoulder marks, he has little pieces of open area where a gear would be to attach to his arm because again, these are animatronic animal characters that feed on humans and attack them. 
Now I'm just getting some red aqua paint and painting in the rest of my body on my shoulders and chest where it's bare. You really want your paint to not be too watery and drip everywhere. It's really easy to get it too watery when you're painting over large portions of your body. You want it like a creamy consistency with not too much water, but if you do it too thick, it will skip and not come out good. I dried my entire body off that I just painted on my chest and shoulders, so I guess not my entire body, but I dried that portion off with a hair dryer so that it will be nice and smooth to do some more painting on. Because I'm going to get an orange stipple sponge with that burgundy cream paint, which is basically just black and red cream paint mixed together, and do some texture on the shoulders and neck. And you can do some black cream paint textures around like his mouth area, and I'm doing like these shoulder pieces so it looks like he has these shoulder bones of red like the character originally has in the video game. Getting that same burgundy color and outlining my eyebrows, you know, you want even the fox's eyebrows to be on fleek. And like I said before, I was having problems with too much highlights and cast of light from the camera and the paint. So I was powdering it down really well, hoping it will work and praying. But, you know, it didn't really work out. And now it is time to put our giant ears back on. And now we are completely done with our Foxy, the Pirate Fox makeup look from the video game Five Nights at Freddy's. I hope you guys enjoyed this makeup look. It was one of the most difficult ones I have done making those prosthetics. But I think it was well worth it. I still have fun challenging myself. And I think it turned out pretty cool. And sadly it is time to take this off. Which was so difficult to do because I got some of my baby hairs inside the liquid latex. And I don't advise that. I told you my baby hairs just run rampant and wild and want to do their own thing and some of them had to be sacrificed. I definitely had to rip some out terribly. It's no big deal, but I wouldn't advise it. It's painful. No matter how many times I've tried whenever I do bald caps or anything, even by professionals, they always rip one of my baby hairs out. It's fine. More will grow. Like I said, taking this off was so extremely difficult. I used isopropyl Miristate solution with a brush. Use a brush that you're going to throw away because it's so oily and greasy, it's gonna ruin the brush, but it's worth it because you really need to soak and let the solution settle into the fine lines of your prosthetic to be able to take it completely off without too much pain because using prosade and liquid latex could really pull and tug at your skin and I've got really sensitive skin so you want a lot of solution. I know it doesn't feel nice and it's oily but you do not want to tear your skin. And then you get the goo. The goo is what I call when you mix pigments of paint with any type of prosade or especially liquid latex, it like goose up into these little balls that get in your hair and everywhere and it's not cute. So you really need to get those out with your fingers or with the isopropyl miristate and take a shower. Little reminder, all the products I use in these makeup transformations will always be listed down below in the description box. Hope you guys like this. Thanks for watching. As you can see, I was left with a huge mess and I gotta take a shower. Bye.